Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and in today's video I'm going to talk about Power Automate for desktops picture in picture feature. So this feature was released in May of 2024 which is last month and currently is in preview. One of the interesting things about this attended type of robotic process automation system is that it opens up another virtual desktop on your machine and this is actually a copy of your machine over there. And what's interesting is that now all your RPA desktop flows can run on that virtual machine so that you are not interrupted doing your day-to-day -day tasks. Underneath the hood, they're both the exact same machine. So this is pretty awesome, both from a time and a cost expense standpoint, because you don't have to go and stand up another physical or virtual machine. You can do it inside your own device. So stick around, this is pretty awesome. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. The picture in picture functionality in Power Automate for desktop was released on May 3rd of 2024. And here is the official Microsoft documentation for that. This link is there in the description below. A Couple of important things I wanna point out is that it is in preview. Preview means look, touch, play, just don't go production with it. But it is pretty awesome, so definitely get yourself familiar with it, which is why I'm building this entire video just for you. Also, there are a couple of important things you need to be aware of. First of all, your Power Automate for desktop version needs to be at least version 2.43 or later. And this is what I mean. When you go to your Power Automate for desktop, if you go and click on this question, which is also for help, and go and click on about, this is the one. You gotta make sure that yours is at least a 2.43 or greater. Mine is a 2.44, so I'm good. And I'll show you more about that in a few minutes. So let's make sure we cover all the prerequisites. Uh, yes, you need to have the Power Automate for desktop installed in a machine, which is obvious. Um, you need to be signed into it, and then the user needs to have Power Automate premium plans or the pay-as-you-go. Pay-as-you-go is what I'm using. All right, I'm gonna skip this one for now and jump to the last one. It says that a device that runs Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise or Windows 11 Pro or Enterprise and it also works for Windows servers, which can be server 2016, server 2019, or even the server 2022. So in my case, it is Windows 11, um, but it also works for Windows 10. So at least you need to have one of those desktop operating systems. All right, so now let's go and take a look at these policies that you need to set up. Now over here, it gives you basically what is the URL type of a thing, where actually location, but I'm gonna show you how to get that. Um, on your search, you go ahead and put in this GP edit and this section comes up. So here is what it is. I'm just gonna open this up right there so we can actually reference this section over here. I'm gonna go and open this up. So in the computer configuration window settings, so over here in computer configuration, so computer configuration window settings, go to security settings, which is right over here, security settings, and then look for local policies, user rights. So I'm just gonna expand this over here, local policies, and then I'm gonna to come to the left and I'm gonna go and expand this and I'm gonna go and click on user rights assignment and now you see all the policies. The specific one that we are looking for is allow log on locally. So right over here, allow log on locally. When I click on that, these are the groups. So you need to be at least in one of them. And so therefore I have to tell you that for this functionality, which is the picture in picture, you need to have local administrative access on your machine, local admin access. So for example, in my case, I am already part of this administrator group, and so therefore it works. All right, so we went and took care of the allow log on locally properties policy for computer configuration, which is this one over here. We also need to go and take a look at the last one, which is access this computer from the network, which is right over here, access this computer from the network. So if I go and click on it, you will see that the administrator is also over here. So these are the two requirements that I've done from a policy standpoint, which is basically permissions is what it is. So we went and took care of that. The other thing is the settings of the Power Automate for desktop application itself. So to enable the picture in picture run mode on the machine, follow one of the methods described over here. So there's a couple of them. Manually, you can run the desktop flow in picture in picture mode on your machine. I'll show you how you can enable that. But there are also a couple of settings that you need to do over here. So this one over here, update an existing installation and enable or disable the picture-in-picture -picture run mode. 
this is something that I had to do because I already had the latest version available. I had a 2.45, uh, but I still had to enable the picture in picture mode. So let me quickly show you how to do that. All right, so I come over here um, and I just do a search for the command prompt right there. And I'm gonna right click on that and run as administrator. This is what is needed. And I'll go ahead and enable that, which is perfect. Um, and I gotta make sure that I come into this specific location. So I'm gonna do CD backslash, get out of here. I'm gonna do change directory program. And I just hit tab after that, uh, goes into the program files x86. Right? Then I'll do another CD power. I'll hit tab again, power automate for desktop, perfect. And now I am in the folder structure that I need. So the next thing it says, run the command, which is this one to enable it. So I'll go and just copy that over, do a control, select it, control C, go back to my command prompt. By the way, I didn't mention this, but over here you see it says administrator. If you went ahead and did the run as administrator correctly, you will see this administrator over there. So make sure that you're seeing that as well, all right? All right, so I went ahead and copied this one section over here, which is pad child session installer.host.exe. And I'm gonna paste it over here and I'm gonna click on enter. So in my case, this was already pre-configured, hence it's telling me child sessions are already enabled. Um, in your case, make sure that's the output that you're also getting uh, so that we can actually move forward with it. And this is it. These are the prerequisite steps that you need in order for this functionality to work. So now that we've done all of this, let's go into the Power Automate for Desktop and let me actually show you how this thing works. So I'm in my Power Automate for Desktop application running on my Windows 11 Pro machine. And let's just make sure that I've got the prerequisites met. First thing is I am doing the premium version using pay as you go. So I'm good over there. Second thing is the version. So if I go on the top right and I click on help, which has got that exclamation mark as well. If I go and click on it, click on the about, I see that I'm on version 2.44. The minimum required version is 2.43. So I've definitely met that requirement. So I'm in good shape over here. All right, so as long as we've met these two, here's what you should be able to see now. For any of your existing flows, if you go and click on the ellipsis, and now when you click on run, you should see this arrow pointing to the right, and you should see these two options. One is run on desktop, and the other one is run in picture in picture. So watch this. Right now you see these icons over here, or these logos, they are what you've already been familiar with. So if I even just went ahead and clicked on play, here's what's gonna happen. It'll actually go and start executing this desktop flow. And the desktop flow is pretty simple. A message comes up, gives you this information. After five seconds, it goes and closes it, opens up this desktop application, and then it goes there and exits that. That is all that this flow does, all right? The flow is not the main reason for this video. It's about the picture in picture one. Uh, but let me show you now what the other settings you can do. So with this selected, if I come down and I go to properties, on the properties, you can go ahead and actually turn this on by default. And let me go and close this one. So here you go. See the run in picture in picture, it's toggled off by default. Let me go and toggle this on, click on save, and now watch over here. You see that additional icon that has come up? That is the exact same icon as the run in picture in picture. So you see that there's two ways to do it. You can go and trigger this off only once by actually coming in and doing this, or you can set that as the default such that when the flow runs, it will always run in picture in picture, which is pretty awesome. I like that they've given you this flexibility. All right, so now let's actually see this thing work. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and made that as my default setting. So now let's go and click on run. So when I do that now, it opens up with this additional window and it's saying that it is running in picture in picture mode and it has signed me in to this virtual desktop. And therefore, now in the desktop, my RPA is running. So this is the exact same one we just saw. It's all doing it directly inside that. Now, other things is that once it ran, your desktop always stays on over here, which is pretty neat because you can basically just go ahead and move that over in your side screen and let all your other flows run in this virtual desktop. Mm -hmm. Couple of important things is that only attended flows run over here which means you have to be signed in to your machine for those flows to work successfully. And we've already done that. Other things, if you haven't noticed, is on the top right. You see it says view only and always on top. Now, if you build Power Automate for desktop flows, uh, you're familiar with this one, always on top. Because remember, in the messages action also, there is that feature to go and put that always on top. So this is actually pretty new. However, this view only is pretty awesome too. 
check this out. So now I've got this virtual desktop running over here and in it, I can go ahead and click on any of these icons. So I can go ahead and click on my Edge browser and this is opening up in the virtual desktop and it's working just fine. However, check this out, right? I'm gonna go and close this now and I'll turn on the view only. And as the name suggests, you are only able to view or just see the activity going on over here, just see the icons, but you cannot go and do anything else. So see, previously I went ahead and selected Microsoft Edge, which is why it got highlighted. But now that I have view on, if I go and click on the other ones, they are not getting highlighted. And this just tells you that, okay, view is on, it is only for view, I cannot go and edit it. And this is so important, especially if you're going ahead and continuing to use that machine, and you've also got this virtual desktop coming up, you don't accidentally click on it and completely mess up your RPA desktop flow running over there. It doesn't happen, why? Because you've only got the view functionality turned on. So this is just helping you avoid any end user problems that you might make, such as accidentally clicking on it. Really, really like this feature. I personally, I'm gonna leverage it and keep it turned on. So now I'll just do this as an example, all right? So here we go, I'm gonna keep that on over here and let's go and turn this guy on one more time. I'll go ahead and say run, we'll take a look at our virtual machine. My hand comes up, so there you go. The message came up and this is happening inside our virtual machine, all right? And then afterwards the application opens up, goes ahead and exits it, but so the floor ran and the desktop still runs over here. It works really successfully without interfering in your day-to-day -day work and remember, Underneath the hood, they're both the exact same desktop applications. This is a virtual extension of your own desktop application. So I wanna end by clarifying this one doubt or answering a question that you might have. And that is specifically about this virtual window. So as I scroll down over here, you'll see that it states, this attended run mode is called picture in picture and uses the child sessions technology. So I'll right click on this link so that it opens up in another window and let's go to this tab. This tab and this article is a little bit older. That's why it's referencing some older technologies such as Windows 2012 and Windows 8. But don't worry about it. It does work with the latest operating systems and also the latest servers ones. In fact, we just tested one. What I want you to read is this one over here. Focus on this. It says, a system can only have one active and connected child sessions at any given time. And that's exactly what we did right now too, is for my work physical machine, I was able to only open up one virtual window. So it's only one to one. Not, I can't go in for my virtual machine, open up say two or three. And I know what some of you are thinking, your wheels might all be turning. So Daniel, can I actually go and create a group of machines using this? And no, you cannot, it's only one to one. Because remember, this is just an extension of your own machine. It's not that you're going and spinning up virtual machines. This is basically just a virtual window. So I just wanted to clarify that is that it's only a one-to-one. -one. Uh, you can't go and create multiple ones. So let's do a quick recap. First things is you need that local administrative access and make sure that you've got both of those policies set up on your machine. Next is the actual version of the Power Automate for desktop. It needs to be version 2.43. It cannot be anything less than that. It's completely fine if it's higher than that. You can use this even for your existing Power Automate for desktop flows. And now when you go and click on play, you can choose to run it in picture in picture or select the options and make picture in picture as the default one. And finally, for that virtual window, go ahead and opt in for that view only because after that you can avoid making any accidental clicks in that virtual window. So hopefully this video was useful to you. Hopefully this is a good way to go ahead and now create a virtual window instead of going and setting up another dedicated physical or virtual machine. Hopefully this will help you. And as always, keep using Power Automate for desktop. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment Either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.